joined here at MIPEM by Neil Ushakov, Mayor of Riga. Thank you, Mayor, for taking the time. We have two questions, please. The first being, what is attracting foreign investment to Riga? It's been a good uh, couple of years, um, according to our data. Um, what is pulling investors to Riga? Well, on one hand, it's um, geographical position. <clears throat> it is proximity of... Um, say they're starting from Stockholm and Helsinki and ending up uh, with Moscow. You need something like 50 minutes to fly to Moscow, you need 50 minutes to get to St. Petersburg, you need the same time to get to Helsinki and to Stockholm. It is really easy. And we've got almost uh, 80 plus uh, direct destinations where you can fly either from Riga to Riga. Second of all, when we talk about our human capital, we've got people who are trained on one hand to work in accordance to Scandinavian requirements, on the other hand, uh, people in Riga, people in Latvia in general, they understand pretty well also particularities of uh, working in the post-Soviet uh, uh, Union. Uh, countries like starting from Russia, uh, Ukraine, Belarus, uh, we've got understanding how to provide, for instance, assistance to countries that are planning to join European Union, starting from Moldova and then Ukraine again. Um, Plus, if we talk about the um, role of uh, Riga, we should understand um, that uh, Riga is the largest city in the region. I do love uh, both Vilnius and Tallinn, but this city is uh, somewhat smaller. So Riga is also a natural capital for the region. And it has been a tradition for centuries. I remember that back in the 19th century, well, not personally remember, of course, but from books, uh, Riga was the third largest city, uh, third largest port of uh, Russian Empire. Yep. And, uh, for instance, uh, in times of Russian Empire, Germans and Europeans were opening factories in Riga in order to um, uh, find solutions how to deal with uh, Russian custom. Yeah, that was a very good experience at times. So we've got both historical uh, experience, we've got uh, people who are extremely multilingual, speaking at least three languages, uh, Latin, Russian and English. It, it really helps. And uh, one more thing, back in 2009, when I was first time elected as a man, it was a year of financial crisis, so we were cutting down budget, we were firing people, we were cutting down salaries. And we introduced a new program, spending money on advertising Riga abroad as a tourist destination and as a destination for direct investment. Since 2009, we managed to increase the number of tourists coming to Riga from 700,000 to 2.5 million in eight years. So we are able to show attractiveness, historical attractiveness of an old Hanseatic port of Riga. And Riga has quite a, um, a social scene, does it not attract um, a lot of youth, a lot of startups? Why is that? Why does it have this reputation abroad for that? I mean, well, we've got extremely, uh, I would say, active uh, citizens in the city, and the uh, city tries to provide all possible support. So, yes, we do love when we see um, smart ideas, we do uh, love when we see um, uh, new industries, um, uh, new enterprises opening with a high. Uh, well at it, that's uh, what we are trying to uh, concentrate. Um, plus, at the same time, uh, we also, we as a city, which is providing extremely wide range of uh, social support. I mean, public transportation for free pensioners and then students, so it's a combination of factors, I would say. What are some of the challenges? What's, what's making Riga less attractive and what are you doing to overcome that? Well, there are certain, I would say, uh, factors we can really affect. Uh, it is both our strongest um, side and sometimes it also creates, uh, um, I would say, challenges. We are eastern border of the European Union, we are bordering with Russia. So that means that for investors, uh, our competence, our experience in uh, working in the Russian market is a plus. But when we see uh, geopolitical um, conflicts, so obviously it affects uh, local business. And lastly, so um, do you think that the mood the, um, for Russian investment is increasing these years or decreasing? I know it's one of your key partners. We, had, um, we have had, I would say, extremely successful program of um, selling permissions to stay in exchange for investment uh, either in uh, real estate or in uh, business. This program is basically down after 2014. So we managed to issue um, uh, altogether roughly 10,000 permissions to stay to Russian citizens. People spending money, bringing their families, uh, buying property, uh, furniture, design. It was quite an impressive, I would say, spillover effect. But since 2014, uh, basically, this process stopped. When I talk about tourists, uh, we are back on track. Actually, number of Russians decreased by one third uh, during the 2014-15, uh, but now we see increase in Russian tourists. Uh, 
but in general, I wouldn't really right now try to forecast the uh, development of investment uh, and other economic relations, taking into account some certain events uh, between the EU, US, and Russia. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.